a week after Cyclone Gita struck Tonga. Isn't it amazing? It's taken a week to get to New Zealand, causing widespread damage. Many families are still living in evacuation centres in Tonga. On the island of Ewa, nearly every home suffered significant damage. Crops were destroyed and residents are desperate for food and aid. RNZ Pacific's Koru Vaka Uta and visual journalist Richard Tindler flew to Ewa to see how its 5,000 strong population is faring. It takes us eight minutes to fly the 42 kilometres to the southeast of Nukualofa, where Ewa lies. Although much of the global attention has been on the main island of Tongatapu, Cyclone Gita actually tracked closer to Ewa and reports have been few on the impact there. First impressions show much of the agriculture that Ewa is known for has been stripped and turned brown by the storm. We're met by local Red Cross officials who escort us to some of the heavily affected areas like the island capital of Ohonua. It's here we meet Nita Peripo. The night for the Kita coming, yeah. I feel like the, I get to die because it, I don't know. I didn't know that I need with my family I came on the night. So when the last round of the Kita, before the eye of the cyclone, that the Windy going to come and blow up my house and put it that bad. Ms. Peripo has lost her entire house, which was thrown into the adjacent property. they all gone, but I don't, yeah, things, but I still alive. Yeah. Those things, I know it's important, but on that time, when Gita was among with us, my life is important to me. The others that I can get for the next time, but my breath is still important to me to have it. Ms. Beripo has three children who she says are doing fine. But disaster officials often talk of the need for young children to return to school to regain a sense of normalcy. For those here, there's still uncertainty about when that can happen, as Ewa High Head Tudor Sione Saili explains. The hall has been, the roof has been taken off from, the, and I think that's the main impact was happening to the school. Not only that, some of the classroom has been, louvers has been broken down, and we are waiting for the mystery what is happening to the school when we start. There's also uncertainty surrounding the island's only prison. Half of the prison has been destroyed by Cyclone Gita, the 14 inmates having to be moved into one wing during the storm as roofs were torn off eight cells, the prison hall and the warden's living quarters. Prison guard Victor Tukia was on duty the night of the storm. We only use eight. Eight. Eight room on this side. We can use it. in only one room on this side for or the collection officer. We, we use on this side. The prison's water supply is also broken, and staff and inmates are relying on transported supplies and rainwater to get by. As night approaches, Prison authorities have still had no contact with disaster officials apart from the Red Cross. As the sun sets over Ewa, a week after Cyclone Gita, dozens of families return to evacuation centres all over the island, like this one at Angaha. It's not an easy life in the centre with no power, and this evening a stew is being made from six cans of fish to feed up to 60 people. Ana Esi Tuipoloto is here with eight other members of her family. We don't have much food now. We just need, uh, like, we just need the food because we have lots of people here. We have lots of family. We stay here and we need the help. Despite the dire circumstances, Ms. Tuipoloto still has hope for the future. My dream for the future, we just like we pray for the help to come and we want um, like our families in the overseas to help us like to bring our the stuff for the house so we can go back and stay there. This much is clear on Ewa. Despite the difficulties of the past week, the people still retain their good humour. For Checkpoint, I'm Korovaka Uta.